So this is you. You don't know the running, walking, jumping and maybe two attacking animations from Mixama. You have a rigged model and you want to create a third person controller for your game. You saw in the tutorial that you can casually construct such a controller in like 15 minutes of Dragon visual programming notes on the screen. You successfully repeated this process in like an hour and it seems to you, you understood the workflow. Then you play with your prototype for a couple of minutes and then the thought hits you. Even for your hobby game of passion you probably need at least 15 animations and a studio-made game has by lowest mark 100. Some would still try to extend the blend tree or state machine based controller and we'll end up with a spaghetti code draw game with one hard-coded character and a prototype location. The chance of you dropping the development grows with each feature you are trying to implement and some can even start to blame the Godot itself for not being suited for the task. What started as a nice visual representation for your systems became a noodle plate. Your project is in the dire spot as you chose the wrong turn at the very beginning of your journey. But there is a path to light. What if I show you the controller, which can have as many animations as you wish with linear scalability? Would you believe that this controller manages its animations with Godot's original animation play and does it better than the tree? Will it surprise you if I tell you it has a graphical representation? But it is not even inside a Godot, it is actually an Excel table. Would you believe that layers in this controller are so weakly coupled it can literally be plugged into first person, third person, 2D top down game and even text narration graphics and would behave deterministically no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, this controller right now is on the screen managing the behavior of this Xbot. And not only that, on top of this controller I have built a complete authoritative asymmetrical dedicated server with client's prediction and reconciliation. Not to boast but to demonstrate you that properly built system can support any feature development as the new features create new additional code but don't modify already written one. This character base is so mighty yet so simple you will start to see the word God in Godot engine's name. Did I hook you? Good. From now on, in the next 3 or 4 videos on my channel will be devoted to building this system from the complete zero and I will distribute the code. In the first video on this channel I said I am a hater of tutorial projects, but I only dislike them because tutorial projects tend to isolate some small problem and provide a solution that is practically bad because it's built on top of non-existent architecture. And I'd say it more. This won't be the code review in do that, don't do that manner. Practically it will be a short game development course. I will cover and explain each architectural decision I make during the development and provide alternatives. And now, talking about alternatives, what is even wrong with Animation Tree controllers? Isn't visual programming cool? Isn't Blend Tree capable of two-click solving the problems which will require several big and difficult for understanding lower-level coding classes to solve? Yes, it's capable but its shining power leads people to great misconceptions. The problem of which I want to talk is frameworkization of animation tree nodes. See, as natural toolbox leaves, people who use it encounter different problems. Some of these problems are presenting themselves often, and the best toolbox users sometimes create the big tools that help with problem on the base of toolbox itself. The community is happy. They now are calling the tool a central library, but as time progresses, the tool grows in use and sometimes its flaws become very obvious. Then other people come and build a tool on top of the tool. And so the framework arises. And the problem with frameworks is they are so focused on all possible solutions to the problem field, they forget to focus on the problem itself. The framework grows and grows, and if at some point it becomes impossible to think of not using it, it becomes impossible to solve the problem this framework can solve. The framework warps user's perception of reality. It replaces the goal of learning the solution to the problem with the goal of learning the framework, with the promise that solution will come if framework is mastered. I love Godot, I enjoy using it, but Godot is terrible if used as a framework. And you know what? I like this very much, as what Godot is 
it is the perfect toolbox. The box of small tools of perfect size and power, enough to make my work easy and enjoyable, and not big enough to consume me, to rule how I should build my workflows. And the blending tree stuff is also like that. It's a mighty tool, but it is a tool. The blending tree blends animations. You can't bash it into your game enough times so your game is done. All you will get is a large amount of blended animations. Animation tree is a tool to manage the presentation layer of your program, and if you are trying to build all the simulation at the same place, you are doomed from the start. And if you are aiming at building a little bit of simulation in there, and to have a big internal model somewhere else, congratulations! Your internal model now drips control to your presentation layer, and you created spaghetti code that is hard to maintain at scale. Remember one thing. Everything in Godot Editor is done in Godot. From the smallest bricks to the titanic utility blocks like Animation Tree Notes. Don't think you need a magical wand to create whatever you want. If you really want to build something, just do it! I personally see two uses for Animation Tree's visual programming stuff. First is a cursed child, the fast prototyping. And the second one is True Destination, solving of difficult animation blending. Want to run your legs and to procedurally aim with your torso? Blending tree. Want to procedurally rotate the head of your RPG character towards the point of interest? Blending tree. Want to create a non-existent before animation from any amount of incoming variables? <laughs> Believe it or not, blending tree. And what about the fast prototyping? <laughs> well. You can't take the words out of the song. The process of creating something small with Animation Tree is very fast and easy. Though, the only thing you can get at the end is the prototype. You wanted a prototype? Great! Success, actually! But many of us don't want a prototype. I didn't install Godot the prototyping engine to create prototypes. I installed Godot the game engine. It reads that right here. And I want to create games with it. And, as always, talking about alternatives, any path can lead to success. There are people out there that somehow manage to create nice things while using Animation Tree nodes as a core. But those who chose this path must embrace it, must follow it to the end and invent techniques to work effectively. They are using complicated visual clusters with thought-out inputs and outputs to encapsulate things. They are experts in the usage of all these no subnodes types. And in the end, architecture, choice of abstractions and encapsulation are kings. There is nothing new. I assure you that people who can pull this off know exactly what and why they are doing at each step. And if you are watching this video, you probably don't. So why don't simulate in the simulation layer and present in the presentation layer from the start? Using Animation Tree doesn't instantly make you a spaghetti coder. But even if you are, spaghetti coding isn't a death sentence. There are masterpiece games out there that are spaghetti coded. But to create one is a great feat not many are able to achieve. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. See you in controller tutorial videos.